Hi and Assalamualaikum. My group will present about steps in the gene cloning. Before we go into the details about this subtopic, we must know about gene cloning, including what is its definition, the purpose of this method, and the first animal that has been gene cloned. First of all, gene cloning, also known as molecular cloning, uh, is the method of forming the numerous identical copies called clones from a particular gene. So what is Clone. Clone is the large number of exact copies that has been uh, produced genetically. Uh, the purpose of gene cloning is to create copies of a particular gene and can be used in many applications through various industries such as pharmaceuticals, uh, agriculture, and a lot. Uh, the simple examples for gene cloning applied by pharmaceutical industries are human insulin production, um, clothing factors, human growth, hormone, and several anti-cancer drugs. Meanwhile, for agriculture sectors, uh, the gene cloning is used in producing uh, cyanobacteria like no stock, which is the nitrogen fixing bacteria. Through this method, they can fix the nitrogen in the air and make them useful for the plants. For your information, the first animal that underwent uh, gene cloning is clothed frog uh, Xenopus in 1973 by Stanford and University of California, San Francisco. UCFC, uh, UC, UCSF uh, researchers. How do researchers uh, exactly uh, do gene cloning? They do it by going through five steps, which is isolation, uh, cutting the vectors and chromosome DNA using using the specific uh, restriction enzymes, and creating recombinant vectors. Uh, number four is the transformation by inserting the recombinant vectors into the host cells that allow the multiplication process of recombinant vectors to occur. The last process is screening of the clones and uh, colony hybridization process to identify clones that carry the gene of interest. So all of these steps will be uh, present in detail uh, by my group members. Before that, gene cloning applies uh, recombinant DNA technologies or it can be written as rDNA technology in order to produce a recombinant DNA molecule before forming a large number of copies encoded by the particular gene. So rDNA technology are widely used in genetic engineering and back in 1973, Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer used this process to produce recombinant uh, DNA or artificial DNA. As you can see, in this poster, we provide you with an example of gene cloning, which is the production of human insulin. In this graph, we can see that the number of the, the insulin production is increasing day by day um, and year by year in numerous countries as shown here. It is because it is expected that the number of patients who are suffering from diabetes will keep increasing. And not only that, the researchers also believe that the awareness among the people regarding the benefits of insulin also will rise. So from here, we can see that uh, gene cloning uh, actually uh, also give the uh, good impact to the human as well. So that's all from me. I'll pass to Iman to explain the details about the first and second steps of gene cloning. That's all from me. Okay, so thank you, Alia. So hi, Assalamualaikum, my name is Iman. So today I'm going to present about the first and the second step of gene cloning. For the first step is the isolation of the genes. So the DNA containing the gene of interest from foreign cells and plasmids from bacteria cells will be isolated. Basically, in this step, there are two DNA that are going to be isolated. The first one is the DNA plasmid from the bacterial cell. And the commonly used bacterial cell is E. coli. Okay. So plasmid is a circular, small circular DNA in bacteria that can replicate independently. And the second DNA that will be isolated is the target DNA containing the gene of interest that we would like to use in the experiment. So basically, this target DNA can be taken from any living cells in this world. Okay. So the second step is the cutting of the plasmids and the chromosomal DNA. So in this step, restriction enzyme, also known as restriction endonuclease, is used to cut the, to cut the gene of interest into small multiple fragments, whereby one of the fragments will have the gene of interest. Okay. Bear in mind that the restriction enzyme used should be able to identify the should be able to identify the sequence of the gene that we want to cut. 
so that when we cut the gene, we will get the right gene that we want. Okay. So uh, for the plasmid as well, we need to use the same restriction enzyme so that um, both of the cut gene will have complementary end. Okay. So how does restriction enzyme work? works? So basically restriction enzyme works just like a pair of scissors where it will cut precisely uh, at a point. For example, at a recognition site of the DNA. For example, the restriction sign E equal R1 recognize the recognition site GAATTC and it will cut precisely between the base G and A. So as the result, the cut DNA, uh, the cut end of the DNA is called the sticky end or cohesive end, whereby there will be four bases without their partner. So this um, uh, without partner, this four bases uh, without their partner enable them to attach themselves to another DNA that is cut with the same restriction enzyme. So that's all for the first and the second step of gene cloning. I'll pass the floor to my next member. Thank you, Iman. Uh, so, assalamualaikum and good afternoon. My name is Sarah. I'll be continuing our presentation today with the next step, which is the third step uh, in gene cloning, which is to create the recombinant plasmids. So, basically, recombinant plasmids is, uh, is a plasmid that contains gene of interest or different piece of foreign chromosomal DNA in which this plasmid is conjoined with, another, uh, with the other um, chromosomal DNA. Uh, to form the recombinant plasmid. So how is this recombinant plasmid created? So as Iman was saying earlier, uh, the restriction enzymes will uh, cleave the plasmid and also the chromosomal DNA uh, to produce sticky ends. So at these sticky ends, the two DNA molecules will join together through the base pairing process. Okay, So the base uh, between these two sticky ends will pair with each other to form uh, circular plasmids with new, uh, with new DNA. Okay? Uh, however, the, this process doesn't stop here as there is still gaps or spaces on the new DNA backbone. So this is where the DNA ligase enzyme comes into action where it will bind to this DNA backbone to close them by forming phosphodiester bonds to link the base pairs. Okay, so I would like to emphasize on each recombinant plasmid, there are three, three main components that plays a major role. Iman, can you please uh, zoom in on the first image? So as you can see, uh, there are three components that play uh, their, their uh, respective roles. So firstly, uh, the replication origin. Okay, uh, so the replication origin is a, a particular gene sequence which acts as, in, as initiation site um, of replication. So with this site available, the DNA can replicate independently uh, with, uh, a, with the help of this uh, a particular gene sequence. Okay, up next we have the uh, gene, gene that is resistant to a specific antibiotic, which in this case is ampicillin. Okay, uh, so the function of ampicillin is to provide the host cell the ability to survive in a medium containing uh, the specific antibiotic. So in a way, it will uh, increase the resistance of the host cell uh, towards uh, the specific antibiotic in the medium so that it can uh, survive. Last but not least, we also have the LEXZ gene, uh, which is situated within the restriction site. Uh, so the LEXZ gene acts as marker to let scientists differentiate uh, between the host cell that contains the recombinant plasmid and also the host cell that contains non-recombinant plasmid. Um, so uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, recombinant plasmid consists of plasmid that is joined with a uh, foreign chromosomal DNA, right? Um, Iman, can you show the other picture? Okay. okay. However, bear in mind that not all plasmid will reanneal with um, other chromosomal DNA. Some of them will reanneal within themselves. Like, uh, for example, this plasmid right here, it reanneals within itself. So, uh, the lexigene will also reanneal within themselves. 
So uh, this will uh, produce DNA sequence uh, that uh, are able uh, to generate active beta galactose this enzyme. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, for recombinant plasmid, the lexigen will not reanneal. So the DNA sequence is now disrupted. Which um which will inhibit the formation of the beta galactosidase enzyme. So uh, when the beta galactosidase enzyme is produced, uh, in in the case where the plas uh, where the host cell has non recombinant plasmid, okay, uh, it will react with exgal solution to produce a blue colony. Uh, while in on the other hand. When the host cell uh, receives the non uh, the recombinant plasmid, it will react with exgal solution to produce a colorless colony. Okay, so the application of the lexi gene and also the um, gene that is resistant to a specific antibiotic makes more sense in the uh, when we we reach the uh, screening and identifying step. Okay. So that, that will be explained in more detail by my friend later on. Uh, that's all from me. I'll pass to my other group members. Thank you, Sarah. Hello, I'm Ida. Now I will explain about the insertion of recombinant plasmid into the whole cell through transformation. Firstly, we need to understand what transformation is. So basically, transformation can be defined as the process of adding recombinant plasmid into the bacterial cell. So we already know the meaning of transformation and also we already know what recombinant plasmid is from the previous explanation by Sarah. To make it easy, the process of isolating and cutting is to get the DNA fragment and linear plasmid so that both of these can combine together to create a recombinant plasmid. Now, the recombinant plasmid that has been created need to be inserted into the whole cell. Okay, let's proceed to the process insertion of recombinant plasmid into the whole cell. Firstly, recombinant plasmid need to be need to be introduced into a bacterial cell. And the most common bacterial cell that we use is uh, E. coli. Why E. coli? This is because the E. coli has rapid growth, uh, it also has the ability to express protein at very high level and E. coli also will allow the recombinant plasmid to multiply and form colonies. So, uh, to introduce the recombinant to a flask containing a culture of E. coli, then both recombinant plasmid and E. coli will be treated with calcium ion in the form of calcium chloride, the process of shut in the cell wall of neighboring E. coli so that the E. coli will be permeable to the plasmid. Uh, this is because the recombinant plasmid will enter the E. coli through the holes in the cell wall of neighboring E. coli. So, this process that we call as transformation. Uh, I repeat again, transformation is the process of adding the combinant plasmid into the E. coli. So during transformation, the bacterial cell or in this context, we use the E. coli, will take up different recombinant plasmid uh, because there are plasmid with gene of interest and also plasmid with foreign chromosomal DNA. However, uh, in this stage, most of the bacteria cells fail to take up recombinant plasmid. As a result, at the end of this stage, there are three possibilities of host cell, which are host cell with recombinant plasmid, host cell with non-recombinant plasmid, and lastly, uh, host cell with no plasmid. In short, the host cell carrying recombinant plasmid and non-recombinant plasmid will form colonies, while host cells that do not carry any plasmid will not form colonies. This will be explained later in the screening process. Uh, I think that's all from me. Now I will pass the floor to Aina. Assalamualaikum and good morning. My name is Wana Matara Aina and I'll be explaining about the screening of gene cloning and antibiotic resistance. First of all, antibiotic resistance is a consequence of evolution via natural selection 
this selection of antibiotic resistant bacteria may occur anywhere an antibiotic is present at a selective concentration. However, now we want to screen the library in order to find the one we're interested in. So what is antibiotic resistance? It is when a bacteria develops an ability to survive exposure to antibiotics that were designated to kill or inhibit its growth. Furthermore, antibiotic resistant bacteria are free to grow, multiply, and cause infection within the host, even when exposed to antibiotics. It occurs due to changes or mutations in the DNA of the bacteria. How does it happen? The strains of Escherichia coli or E. coli bacteria were used in gene cloning that is susceptible to all antibiotics. Then the only way for the bacteria uh, to uh, be able to grow in on the media containing the amphicillin antibiotic is by acquiring resistance when plasmids were introduced into the bacteria via the transformation process mentioned by Ida. The plasmids consist of antibiotic resistance genes that allow bacteria such as E. coli to survive in the presence of amphicillin antibiotic. In addition to that, E. coli bacteria becomes resistant to amphicillin antibiotic by producing beta-lactamase enzymes. So these enzymes divide the beta-lactamase ring of amphicillin antibiotic to inactivate it. Thus, the bacteria that, look, uh, that took up the plasmid can be screened on nutrient plates containing the amphicillin antibiotic. Apart from that, this uh, Escherichia coli bacteria that carries a plasmid will grow and reproduce. Hence, each bacterium with a plasmid makes a colony. Escherichia coli bacteria that lacks antibiotic resistance genes or that has no plasmid, uh, the amphicillin antibiotic will kill the cells of the bacteria and prevent them uh, from dividing. Either way, no colonies are formed on media plates. However, not all colonies are guaranteed to contain the right plasmid, and that is to do uh, that is because of the DNA fragments that aren't always uh, pasted exactly in the way that we want it during ligation. So we must collect DNA from several colonies to find out if each one of them contains the right plasmid. Uh, that is all from me. So I'll pass the floor to Nabiha to explain about the blue uh, white screening and colony hybridization. Thank you, Aina. So, hi, my name is Nuruna Bebiti Abu Razak. So, now um, I'll be explaining about the blue white screening and also the colony hybridization, which is one of the steps in the screening and identifying of cloning that create uh, the, creating the gene of interest. As Aina has explained earlier, the first stage of this identifying and screening process is the antibiotic resistance. Hence, I'll be explaining about the first one, which is the blue-white screening. So, what is the blue-white screening? Blue-white screening is a negative selection system using a bacterial lactose metabolism as the indicator. So, as Sarah has mentioned earlier, a plasmid, which is one of the type of the vector, consists of a lazy gene that I encode for the production of beta-galactosidase. So, uh, however, in the recombinant plasmid, um, in the recombinant plasmid, the the lazy gene that containing the gene of interest will have an interrupted lazy gene. Therefore, it will prevent the prevent the lazy gene from input for the beta galactosidase and hence will prevent it from producing a blue colonies. So, in this experiment, in this uh, blue white screening, the colony that has been screened from the antibiotic resistance will be treated with the SGL solution. So, as in SGL solution, the SGL solution will be hybrid um, hydrolyzed well, with the beta galactosidis forming the forming the blue colonies. However, in the recombinant plasmids that containing the foreign gene, either the um, either gene of interest or not, they will not form in the blue colonies as as the as the lazy gene is being interrupted. Therefore, they will form a white colonies. So the white colonies uh, will be used in the third stage, which are the colony hybrid hybridization. So, colony hybridization will use a radioactive level probe. The radioactive level probe is used in the SR experiment in order to detect the presence of the recombinant plasmids with the specific sequence of DNA, which is the gene of interest. So, the first step of the colony hybridization is the replica plating. So, what is replica plating? Replica plating is a technique in which the colony is inoculated in a few multiple, in a multiple plates um, in order to allow the colony 
to be tested using a various methods. So we will have a master plate and also a few other plates um, which will be used in this colony hybridization. Next, we will put a natural cellulose disc over the plate. So what is natural cellulose disc? Natural cellulose disc um, is a component that made up of the nitrate and cellulose acetate polymer and the disc have a different parts and also different um, diameters of the parts. So this will make it uh, suitable for this experiment. Next, remove the natural cellulose disc and this natural cellulose, uh, natural cellulose disc that containing the colonies that may contain the gene of interest will be treated with the alkaline solution. This will cause the DNA of the recombinant plasmid to be lysed and denatured. The process of denatured will cause the DNA of the recombinant plasmid to be a single-stranded DNA. This will um, become available for the hybridization of the um, radioactive level probe. So next, the, um, the recombinant plasmid of in, on the natural cellulose disc will be baked and treated with the UV light, which is ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light will cause the binding of the the binding of the recombinant plasmid that may contain the gene of interest and also the natural cellulose disc. And the most important step in this colony hybridization is to add the radioactive level probe into the solution and leave it for the hybridization between the probe and also the colony to occur. And this, um, as we know that the probe is complementary to the um, the, to the specific sequence of DNA of the gene of, uh, of the gene of interest. How, um, therefore, there will be a probe that is not being hybridized, and this will be need to wash. Um, therefore, there will be only the only the recombinant plasmid containing the um, probe, which is the recombinant plasmid containing the gene of interest. And lastly, um, we will need to put an extra film against the natural cellulose disc. So um, this will help to detect the location of the uh, recombinant plasmid containing the gene of interest. And um, by comparing the location of the probe with the original location of the, color of the recombinant plasmid, which may contain the gene of interest on the master plate that we have prepared before. Therefore, the location and the gene, um, the recombinant plasmid containing the gene of interest can be identified. So let me summarize it for you. So, the screening identifying of the clones that carry the gene of interest consists of three steps, which are the first one, antibiotic resistance. The second one is the blue-white screening. And the last one is the colonial hybridization, which is the last stage and the most essential stage, which is to identify the recombinant plasmid that containing the gene of interest. Um, that, uh, that is all for me. I'll pass the floor to Ida to conclude our presentation today. So for the conclusion, let's keep fresh back what we had learned in step and method of gene cloning. First is isolation. This is the process in which we isolated the DNA plasmid of bacteria cell and also the DNA contains gene of interest. Second is cut. Cut is the process of cutting the isolated plasmid to form linear plasmid and also isolated DNA to form a DNA fragment using the same restriction enzyme such as E. coR1. Third is creation of recombinant plasmid by inserting the DNA fragment into the plasmid. However, recombinant plasmid can carry gene of interest or foreign chromosomal DNA. Fourth is insertion of recombinant plasmid into the host cell through transformation. So we already have created the recombinant plasmid. Now we need to insert the in, insert the recombinant plasmid into the host cell by adding calcium chloride and a brief heat shock so that the plasmid can enter. Lastly is screening. Screening has three stages. Firstly, the bacteria will be put in petri plate containing ampicillin. So bacteria does not carry any plasmid, will die because no antibiotic. So the left is bacteria carrying plasmid, but we don't know either it is recombinant plasmid or non-recombinant plasmid. So we need to put in petri plate containing exgol. So the bacteria carrying recombinant plasmid will form white colonies while uh, bacteria carrying non-recombinant plasmid will form blue colonies. Uh, and then uh, the last stage, we need to identify which recombinant plasmid carry gene of interest. So we need to do the colony hybridization by using radioactive labor probe. Uh, I think that's all from us. Thank you and Assalamualaikum.